Hello. Today I'm, uh, I was, uh, the other uh, day or so, I was just looking at some of the films that not only have I not talked about here, but also just haven't watched in a while, and one caught my eye, um, and that is, of course, Seven, um, starring Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman as uh, Detective Mills and Detective Somerset, um, tracking down a killer who is, uh, you know, uh, committing uh, uh, his, his uh, murders in uh, the way of the Seven Deadly Sids. Um, this film also has Gwyneth Paltrow as Brad Pitt's wife. Um, Arlie Ermey is in this film, and the killer uh, in the film, who is not at all uh, given credit until the end of the film, you know, uh, because, you know, it's supposed to be a real surprise. Um, and when you do see him, up until the real reveal of who it is, they do a great way of just having uh, covering his face, you know. Um, there's a part where he's a like a photographer, and then he um, it, it takes pictures. He takes pictures of uh, his victims and. Um, I remember seeing this film for the first time, uh, was about 13 or so, around there, and really enjoying it. Um, it was actually around the time Zodiac came out, which also David Fincher uh, made. Um, so yeah, I think I saw this before, so it would have been like 12 or so, 12, 13, around that age. And uh, this film, really, it's just, it was, it was, it's truly an amazing, um, very well written, and the acting is uh, excellent, uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Morgan Freeman, their chemistry is, uh, is just incredible, um, just the interactions that is had uh, with everyone and the, 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 the dialogue and the trying to figure out who this guy is and, you know, who he's killing when they realize, <laughs> excuse me, uh, when they realize who, that what, what he's doing, like what the killer is doing and what he's pattering them after and the various books, like, Dante's Inferno, for instance, Canterbury Tales, and which, of course, you know, Mills, he's not gonna, you know, Brad Pitt's character, he's not gonna specifically read the actual books overall, he's gonna just get the cliff notes, which he does do, and Somerset, more of him, and he goes and gets, um, you know, he's sort of a old school, but he's also, you know, very ready to retire, which he's going to do in seven days, which of course, you know, seven deadly sins, seven days, um, he, uh, then goes and just getting ready to retire, uh, Deleted scene of an uh, like basically an extended of the opening uh, where we see Morgan Freeman looking around this house that he oh, excuse me um, he basically is just looking around and is, uh, like, like basically this is the house he's gonna live in once he retires and um, Brad Pitt you know he's pretty new, even though he is not at all, uh, he isn't at all, you know, brand new, but he's new to this sort of location, you know, 
like in California, basically. And uh, basically, he's a uh, you know five years uh, already an officer, and he's now a detective, and he's. You know, he, he, he just has a whole worldview that is basically the opposite of Morgan Freeman's. And that dynamic is really cool to see how, you know, these two guys, you know, they have to work together. and But they also, you know, have different styles, methods of yeah, achieving the same goal. And yet, you know, at the end of it all, you know, it's like all, all to get the guy and the results at the end of it come together it's really cool great to see it's just great to see their chemistry and just how well written they are in the direction and everything and of course this film was uh, is the second film Dave Fincher made he made Alien 3 which he hated because he didn't have any control at all you know he had too much studio interference and he just was like he he couldn't care less. He couldn't care less if he ever made another movie ever again in his life. Uh, he directed music videos, but yeah, you know, he uh, was just very unhappy. But this movie, especially with the ending of the film, which if uh, you know you haven't seen this film, you know it's it is quite shocking and quite a twist as to what happens. Um, you know, uh, I do like how Gwyneth Paltrow is shown in the film. You know, she she isn't overtly prominent, but she is important. And you see, uh, Somerset goes to uh, Mills's place to you know eat with them, and uh, how. Um, just see this interaction and learn and just talk and how, you know, Tracy and uh, David Mills how they're, you know uh, they got married and they were together since high school and yeah, they're just very happy together and uh, then there's a dilemma you know, how, you know you know, she's a teacher, but then she tells William Somerset that, you know, she's pregnant and she's not sure she wants to have a baby in a place that they live in that's not very good. So it's like, you know, and, and uh, Somerset says to her, like, how, you know, if, uh, if you, you know, he, he had a girlfriend once, she got pregnant, and after a while, you know, he made it. They talk and then eventually they, he, he's like, yeah, I wore her down and she got an abortion and how, you know, he, he goes like, you know, I am, he says, I'm positive, but I made the right decision, but not a day goes by. Do I not like, you know, like think different, like, like what would have happened if, you know, that didn't happen. Maybe he'd still be with this woman, you know, they'd be together, have a, perhaps have or kids, perhaps, and, you know, it's one of those who knows what would have happened, um, but, and, uh, he says, like, you know, if she does, you know, if she doesn't, uh, keep it, don't tell David, and if she, uh, she decides to keep it, keep the baby, uh, spoil the child every chance they get, and, um, Yeah, that's a it's something that's very important to recall. Um, and uh, you know, uh, they they actually find also the the killers. You know where he, the killer lives, though through unorthodox ways. You know ways that you know. You find the place, you know, Thoriel can't necessarily, you know, do anything without a warrant because of how they got to the place. 
Um, you know, but, you know, they get there, and then and the, his name is John Doe. You know, that's what we know of his name. So he then... Uh, You know, uh, the two of them are outside the door of this place, and then they see him on the hall. It's an apartment building. He then shoots at them, and then Mills runs after him, and, you know, a real big chase ensues. And it's really great. It's really, you know, fantastic. You know, that, like the handheld camera work with following uh, uh, Brad Pitt chasing the, the John Doe while, you know, Morgan Freeman also goes to follows also um, and eventually you know he uh, uh, John Doe you know is able to you know basically uh, uh, hit uh, a Brad Pitt in the head with a like a tire iron or something like that and uh, he drops his gun, and he's on top of a truck. You know, he's looking around to see where he is, and then he gets smacked in the head with a like a tire iron or something heavy like that, I believe. And, uh, you know, he drops his gun, and then... It's also raining constantly throughout the film, so that's always pleasant, you know. It's always wet. It's always... Uh, not overtly... It's just very uh, dreary, essentially. I guess that's a good word for it. And uh, you know, he put uh, John Doe puts his gun to knows his hand. There's this cool shot with the gun and the glove, and you just see up the uh, side of the gun that's at his head. And then you know you think he might shoot him, but then before he does it, he just and before. Uh, Somerset's able to get to where Mills was. Uh, John Doe uh, takes his gun off his head and then gets out of there. And, uh, you know, uh, then they use more unorthodox ways as to get into, get a warrant so they can go and look uh, in his apartment. Um, but they then see this is the photographer. You know, who, who took a picture of the two of them, like a specifically Mills, you know, at, at one of the crime scenes. And, uh, you know, he takes photographs and such and stuff. And then there's, you know, you see other things and souvenirs, I guess you could say, of, uh, of some of his victims and lots of, like, weapons and other things. It's very stuff. And, of course, you know, Biblical stuff, and he has all these journals with so many, so much writing. Um, basically, it's just his thoughts, just written down in the smallest um, uh, possible handwriting one could imagine, just so you could fit it all within 250 pages, and has like so many. Like journals, and uh, and uh, after, and they can't find any fingerprints. Um, at which point, you know, they uh, hear a phone, and then Mills answers it. And he talks to the killer, you know, John Doe. We finally hear really his voice uh, properly, because once we, you know, there's like, yeah, you know, he put on a fake voice as the photographer earlier. And then so he uh, goes and uh, talks about his admiration for the detectives and all that and how, uh, you know, he you know, had a setback because of <laughs> that day, today, and so he's going to have to reschedule some, some stuff. But uh, uh, and then, you know, he continues and he does more uh, killings and 
you know, after a while they then go back. You know, of course, this is like the next day or so. Um, but then they also go and the two of them go back to the precinct. And then we see at that time, you know, a taxi comes. And we see, you know, legs come out and uh, he, this person walks into the precinct not long after the uh, Somerset and Mills go in and then as he's uh, as he's saying detective and they're walking beginning to walk up the stairs he then yells detective and then he everyone turns and looks at him he says you're looking for me and you see his hands are covered in blood and so is his shirt like the, down at the bottom and he and and this is John Doe is of course spoiler alert um you know um if even if you couldn't tell from the voice you definitely will know now it's a you know it's Kevin Spacey and that was, it was such a twist it's like oh wow that's pretty cool uh, that's interesting I, I didn't expect Kevin Spacey to be in the film and huh and you know, and he says like, there's two more bodies, and you know, and he will like sign a full confession. You know, and gets his lawyer also, of course. If uh, if Smills and Somerset uh, uh, takes him to a certain destination as to where the bodies will be, or or are or whatever, and so they do that, um, and they have wires and stuff, and there's a helicopter everything and so they're getting ready for whatever is to come and uh, they finally get to this destination and it's waiting a bit they then uh, see uh, uh, there's a van coming uh, so it goes to check on it and uh, it's a delivery van and he has him get out of the car or the van and then he says he has a package for uh, this guy told me to come here at seven o'clock to deliver his package um to david mills detective david mills and he and somerset tells him to go get it and so he goes and does so and of course after he frisked him and everything um afterwards he then tells him to go which he then does and make sure that the guy uh, gets picked up and then, so you know, it's a package it's a box, which people are like, people are like, oh, is this like a bomb or something? He's going to kill him, all of them. Just like his final two things. Because um, at this point, there's only two sins left. Um, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, we saw uh, gluttony, uh, greed, pride, lust. Sloth. No. Gluttony. Greed. Sloth. Pride. Yeah. And basically, there's two more left. And so, as Brad Pitt is with Kevin Spacey that he's talking to him. You know, he's like saying how you know, it's really good that the two of them get to talk. And how he, you know, he admires Detective Mills. You know, he, what he does is quite something as well as the life that he has. You know, it's really something. And now he's trying to tell him how much he admires him. And how, you know, you and the life you have with your wife. Tracy, and he goes like, what did you say? He goes, it's scary how a member of the press can access information so easily with certain officers of the precinct. And how he goes on and says how, you know, you know, after he, Mills left, he went to his place to play husband but that didn't have, go very well, and um, he took 
took a souvenir, um, which as this is going on, we then see, of course, you know, Morgan Freeman open the package, at which point, once it's opened, he is shocked and he drops his knife. And he looks back at uh, Mills and Doe, and then he says, you know, to the, to the officers of the helicopter that, you know, them to just stay away and that, you know, John Doe has the upper hand. Now he goes back to try and tell Mills, you know, to yeah, drop his gun, to throw it away. And uh, uh, um, you know, and uh, John Doe then says, you know, the souvenir he took was uh, her pretty head. And once he's there, he's like, now what's, what's going, what's in the box? And, yeah, which is, of course, one of the most famous lines of this film is, what's in the box? Um, and how, uh, he's saying, he just told, you know, he's saying, like, give me the gun, David. And he's just, just, you know, you know, he, he's basically told that his wife is dead. He's not believing him, you know. This guy's going on, and you know he's like he seems to think he's some messiah. You know, lust, gluttony, uh, pride. Uh, sloth, lust, uh, greed. You know, all these things. You know, there's uh, envy and wrath are like the last two basically, um, at that point, and how, you know, and basically as it goes on, and how he's saying how, you know, envy is uh, John Doe's sin, and that uh, uh, David Mills has to become wrath. That way he is, uh, seven deadly sin murders, uh, or killings, is a masterpiece, and it's, it happens. You know, it's, uh, you know, and how this, uh, you, know, you know, his wife begged, begged for him not to kill her, begged for her life, and then at this point, you know, um, uh, now, uh, you know, Somerset's saying, telling John Doe to shut up, you know, she begged for her life, and then for the life of a baby inside her, and then after that he says to shut up, and he smacks John Doe. At which point we then see uh, uh, Mills's reaction, and he's just like just floor. He's like, "Wait, what?" And then you see John Doe look at him, and then he goes like, "Oh, you didn't know." And how basically, you know, they're saying how, you know, if 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 Mills kills John Doe, he will win. And also, everything will be basically thrown out if he kills him, which he knows will happen. And of course, he's he's dead, so nothing can really more happen to him, I guess, aside from like be, you know being judged by God. Um, but yeah, and uh, in the end of it all, you know, he's like you can see how he's trying to fight not to kill him, because on one hand, you know. He's unarmed, even though he has killed people. And others, you know, he's unarmed. He's not specifically posing a threat to which, you know, killing him would be justified, you know, or seen as justified in normal uh, police procedures. But then, you know, there's the fact that his wife is dead, as well as his unborn child. And he's just really fighting with this, and then he finally just shoots uh, John Doe multiple times. He shoots him once in the head and then he just, you know, basically shoots him multiple times just for just to anger and then he goes and like walks and likely see his wife's head in the box. And then we see him in the back of a police car and, you know, the captain says, like, you know, they're going to do what they can for him. 
And I've heard people say what, what they think will happen to David afterwards. And people are like, you know, what most likely will happen is he probably won't go to jail because of the circumstances in which he killed him. Um, but he, uh, you know, it's very unlikely he gets to continue to being a detective or anything. You know, and if anything, he's like dead inside. He's hollow. Likely have to have therapy. He'll probably have some sort of other job or maybe go into some sort of psych ward or something to get help. Um, but yeah, this film is, uh, it's truly, it's excellent. It's, uh, it's very dark, of course, you know, but, um, I just love this film. Um, it's a great thriller, a great, uh, great, great film from beginning to end from the writing, the directing, the acting, everything about it is excellent the atmosphere it just everything is just incredible i i love this movie um glad we watched it it's been no oh, it's been a while it's been some time since i last saw this so um i don't know i just wanted to watch something that was like a thriller um and yet something like it's like you know i just hadn't watched in a while and then i'm just looking around here i'm like oh seven uh very good film. Um, excellent film. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this. And I just I know I described basically the overall plot point by point overall, but no, no, this is just one of those films where it's like it's just you, there's so much going in, and it's just I just I love this film so. I don't know, I just, I just like talking about it as much as I can. And, uh... <clears throat> it, it's great, it's fantastic, and I'm happy... Um... to have rewatched it. And, um... I also listened to the commentary, which I don't do too often. But, yeah, I found... commentary to be quite interesting, with Dave Fincher and Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Very interesting. Um... But also, <clears throat> of course, you know, additional and extended scenes, alternate endings. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's just very excellent film. Um, anybody who likes thrillers and stuff, uh, recommend it. Um, really good. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, envy. Don't know why I didn't just look on the back, but, well, I guess because it's all right here, but then again, it's kind of like, you know, all written like that, so. Seven. Yeah. Great film. Uh, um, so yeah, I uh, hope all of you are having a great day, hope you're all having a great weekend, and you'll all have a great week. See you all next time. Bye.